So as we look at um, this text in 1 Samuel chapter 30 and how David responded to the sucker punch, there's a few things as we were just talking about. Uh, by the way, this is part two uh, of responding to a sucker punch. And we talked about making sure that we understand, use this time to allow the crisis to create urgency. We talked about allow the crisis to motivate you to revisit your priorities, which includes sharpening your focus, developing your dis necessary dip disciplines, realigning yourself up with the, God's vision for your life, and uh, becoming a good counterpuncher, having a good jab, a good hook, a good uppercut, you name it. And oftentimes, in these situations, when you get hit like this, your counterpunch has to be the word of God. You got to be standing on something. You got to be thinking greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You got to be thinking that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is what you got to be thinking. I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me, I shall condemn. These are all good counterpunching scriptures that you can use and then walk it out in faith. The last thing I want to talk about here and about counterpunching and getting sucker punched, have you ever noticed that whenever somebody sucker punch you, it's because they believe, my God, that you, you're, you are stronger than they are, or that you are, uh, and they, they believe, or they're afraid of you. I, that's the word, word I'm looking for. They're afraid of you. You know anybody comes around and try to sucker punch you or sneak, sneak you and to catch you off guard is they're afraid. They know if you see them coming, they're, uh, they're in for a fight. And I want you to be able to understand the enemy is afraid of us and he's trying to destroy us, but God is on our side. Take a look at, as I close this part of this uh, five part series this week, that's really going to strengthen you. I'm talking about four wheel drive. You know, you're going to need a Hummer for this. You're going to need to have all your wheels planted on the ground. You're going to be able to, everything needs to be turning on all cylinders in this season. Use what you got. And I want to just kind of coach you along the way this week. So take some good notes. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, so you'll be notified every time I upload a fresh message throughout the week. And I'm going to be doing it sometime around 12 o'clock every day so you can expect to see it on Facebook and just click in and get the, the, the message of the day. Uh, so here is the thing that I want you to remember. And this is what we can glean from this text in 1 Samuel chapter 30. That what did David do when he gets sucker punched? You got to remember that you got to resist the temptation to place blame. Uh, when David... And then those men of his came home and they saw that they lost everything. The men started to attack him. They wanted to destroy, blamed him for it. Uh, no one's to blame for this virus. This virus comes from the pit of hell. Disease comes from the pit of hell. And so there's no one to blame, but we must come together during the time of crisis to get victory. So David took 400 men with him to go get back everything the devil had stolen from him after being hit with a sucker punch. He had to wipe his tear, say it's time to cry and then it's time to fight. Once you finish wiping your tears and you realize you've just been hit, you're going to have to get up, baby, and dry your eyes. Once they tell you they let you, laid you off, and you, you have your moment of fear hit you, and you say, what am I going to do? Then you're going to have to get up and start speaking light to yourself, encouraging yourself. That's what David had to do. He and the Bible says he encouraged himself. I wonder what he said to himself. He may have said, self, we've been through rough times before and we're going to come through this. <laughs> That's how you got to be. You got to be self. This is just you and I. When everybody else is attacking you, blaming you, uh, my God, resist that temptation to blame other folks in this time of crisis and get to work. 
and he encouraged himself. He spoke life to himself. Learn how to speak life into yourself. If nobody else is saying the right things, then you say the right things to yourself. You get up and look in that mirror and say, self, we're going to make it. I'm not going to be overcome by fear. And that's what you're going to have to do. The other thing David did is he went to the Lord. He said, he told the priest, go get the ephod, which means he was ready to go worship. He was ready to talk to God about it. Talk to God about your finances. Talk to God about your provision. Talk to God about, uh, you know, your cares about whether you're going to get the virus. Talk to God about what you should be doing, how you should be planning. Talk to God and God will respond to you. I'm telling you right now, Jeremiah 33, I believe it's um, uh, verse uh, 30 or something around there, uh, it says that I saw that God is going to show us new things that we did not know. We cry out to him and he shows us things we do not know. This is a perfect time to cry out to God. This is a perfect time to rekindle your prayer life. This is a perfect time to start talking to God every day like he's sitting in a car on a on a cool drive on a Sunday morning. Just talk to him like he's your friend and just ask him, Jesus, what's up with this? What should I be doing? What should I be thinking? What should I be eating? What should I be praying? Lean on him. Lean on him. Lean on him and you're going to find yourself in a victorious place. David sought the Lord. And I love this story because it's so it's so relevant. David wanted to know, oh, uh, should he pursue? Should he fight on? And the answer came from heaven is that you should pursue. You should pursue. So we clearly can see that we can experience life and have setbacks, disappointments, and things that happen that's unexpected. But then God says, pursue, pursue, pursue. You can recover all. David, other question David was on David's heart was, you know, am I going to win? And most of us, we're thinking about how is this going to end? How is this going to end? Well, listen, your faith can predict how it's going to end by what you say and what you believe and what you do. And so prophesy the end from the beginning, right in the midst of this situation, be like David when he came up against that Goliath. And he said, on this day, I'm going to cut your head off and feed your body to the fowls of the air. He said this day. So we ought to be declaring on this day, this, this virus is going to leave and never to return. But you can declare the end from the beginning because God made you in his image. And if God can prophesy the end from the beginning, sure enough, you can. So speak, look beyond this virus and see what God has for you and press toward the mark. And so you get this, you get all these, these great principles and points that David is revealing to us. And man, he just went to move forward on this thing and he recovered all. He, he was concerned, said, God, am I going to win? And most of us want to know how this thing going to end. And he, and the Lord told him, you are going to recover all. Pursue and you're going to recover all. And I'm just downloading this message into your spirit today that you can pursue. You're going to overcome this virus. You're going to overcome this situation because it's not permanent and you're going to recover all. It's going to be good that you were, we were afflicted like this. Uh, the Holy Spirit has told me clearly that the way this world will never be the same after this. The believers are never going to be the same. There's going to be a thirst and our urgency like never before, and a boldness that's going to come on the body of Christ like never before. So stay tuned, plugged in, subscribe to my YouTube video. I'm going to be sure to be talking to you, and I'm increasing my connection with you because I want to keep you focused. I don't want you falling into despair, and a shout out to all of my HGM partners, but this is going to be good for us in the end. Let's get focused on, on the business of winning souls and, and strengthening one another. So uh, this is part two. I'm signing off. Watch the first video and the second video. Thank you again. And please, again, hit me up. Subscribe to my channel so I can uh, know that you're there. And I'm going to be loading these messages to help you. Have a great day in the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you.